Hey eBay sellers, it's Suzanne and welcome to my June 2020 sales update video. I've got some interesting stuff for you this time and this one is a little bit different than previous sales update videos. So let's go ahead and get started. The purpose of my sales update videos are showing what the average person can do selling on eBay with consistency and a commitment over time. Also understanding that most of my audience are at-home resellers looking for a business they can run without having to outsource anything, without thousands of items, without liquidation or buying things in quantity, just what you can do buying things from thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales, and running it on your own as an additional source of income for your household. The sales in this video took place from June 1st to June 30th, 2020. In my eBay store, Atlanta Golf Shop, which I have set up as a teaching store, you can follow my store by going to the link below the video and clicking save this seller so you can watch as I list more items and you can check out how I do things and use it as a point of reference in building your own business. Here is my feedback page. I have been on eBay as a seller since March 30th of 2003 so you can see my track record there. The numbers I will show you later in the video. If you do not understand how I'm calculating these numbers, please refer to my video quick bookkeeping tip number one. The link is below this video so you can watch that if you have not already. Also remember that shipping discounts can be up to 40% when printing those labels through eBay. Again, check that video if you have any questions on how I am calculating my numbers. Remember that watchers don't matter, views don't matter, items can sell in minutes, hours, months, or years. My personal objective has changed this year because the world is very different this year than it has been in previous years and I am now looking to achieve $3,500 profit per month by the end of this year and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that after I show you some sales. Now due to the volume of sales this month I'm only going to show you a few. I sold 113 items this month and I do not want to make a video talking about each and every item and I'm sure you don't want to listen to that. So I'm just going to show you some things that I feel I can share some information with you and just some of my notable sales over the last month. Okay, we're going to start with this sporting goods item, which those are really hot right now because people are having a hard time finding them in stores, if stores are open, and people are doing outdoor activities. I had bought this kickboard, never used it. I bought it for 10 bucks last summer and put it on eBay for full price of $19.97. That's what a new one costs and it sold within a few hours. My profit was only $4.85 but I rehomed an item that I wasn't using that someone else could be using and was still in brand new condition. So that's the moral of that story. This item is a Lole women's vest and this is a brand I've been seeing around so I thought well I'm just going to try this which is why I'm including it here because it was a new brand for me I paid six dollars and thirty five cents took an offer of nineteen ninety seven profit was ten dollars and ninety eight cents and this sold in just a couple of weeks here is a men's accessory item Carhartt utility suspenders I paid four dollars and twenty four cents for these sold them for $24.50 on best offer. Profit was $17.77. This is a collectible Run Disney t-shirt. 
I paid two dollars and twelve cents sold it for twenty four dollars and ninety seven cents profit was twenty dollars and forty four cents I actually have a 30 minute video in the premium library about this type of collectible some people don't realize collectibles doesn't just mean little breakable things you stick on your shelf it can be all kinds of things especially with Disney so make sure to check out that video in the premium library for more information this is a Dion Sanders Jersey this was free to me I sold it for $29.97 on full price profit was $26.74 Cuisinart tea kettle I paid $4.17 for this sold it for 30 profit was $22.17 okay this is a teachable moment Woolrich ski sweater this is a heavy ski sweater with the pewter clasps up the front and I paid six dollars and thirty five cents took an offer of thirty profit was twenty dollars and eighty four cents and this sold in June so eBay knows no seasons if you have it list it polo Ralph Lauren three extra large pony golf shirt I paid two dollars and sixty five cents this sold for thirty two ninety seven on full price profit was twenty seven ninety four and this sold in less than a day Missook jacket I paid six dollars and thirty five cents it sold for thirty five dollars profit was twenty five dollars and ninety four cents the buyer did open a return request on this because she didn't like it she has not yet shipped the item so this may or may not appear in another video as a return but as of 10 days after she opened the return request she hasn't shipped it back yet so that's how it goes sometimes they may open a return request and never ship it so you just wait and see what happens this is a St. John skirt I paid six dollars and thirty five cents for this sold it for thirty five profit was twenty three dollars and sixty eight cents I may have had the starting price too high on this at fifty five ninety seven I went in high on purpose I have never found a white or cream colored St. John skirt so the color may have been the issue here black is a much better seller because it hides dirt you don't see the stains and that may have been the uh, factor that caused the lower price but I'm still happy with what I got for this okay this is my first vintage rock band t-shirt Emerson Lake and Powell now they also were named Emerson Lake and Palmer apparently somewhere in there one of the band members left and another one came and had a different last name so this was six dollars and thirty five cents it sold for thirty five dollars profit was twenty four dollars and ninety four cents I did check comps for this there weren't a whole lot of comps and I saw some of these on Etsy that were priced over a hundred but my research showed I just didn't think I was gonna get that and I got two offers within five minutes of listing this so the offers were right close together in price so I just went with it I made a quick 25 bucks in a day listing the shirt I was happy with that and I guarantee I'm gonna find some more because I'm gonna start looking for these now normally I don't look at the t-shirts but as I'm gonna explain in a minute um, I'm going in some different directions on my business okay Nicole Miller eyeglasses frames I paid five dollars and sixty cents for these they sold for full price of thirty nine ninety seven profit was twenty nine dollars and sixteen cents okay and this is my most fun item of the month lucky brand two extra large sweatshirt with Bigfoot there's a little backstory here so you know how we've all been trying to find stuff to watch on streaming or TV because there's just not a whole lot to do right now as far as going out in public so I enjoy anything that's a mystery whether it's forensic files cold case files cold justice uh, dr. G doing autopsies 
whatever it is where there's a mystery. So I kind of went through all of those and something came up that was suggested called Missing in Alaska. And it's about the Alaska Bermuda Triangle where people get lost and there's all kind of uh, legends about what's in there. It's, it's all this uh, uninhabited part of Alaska where people go missing. Watch that. Okay, then Monster Quest comes on and I'm watching shows about Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster and, you know, all those mythical legendary creatures. Watch that for a couple of days. The very next day, this pops up in front of me at a Goodwill store and I literally just started laughing and people started looking at me. And I thought, I guess I'm just in the Bigfoot zone right now where I'm noticing this or it's I'm attracting it. I don't know. But I just thought this was hilarious. So I paid $6.35 for this. It was new with tag, had a $79 tag on it. And I took an offer of 45. Profit was $33.37. The guy who bought it messaged me he's like what will you take for this I have to have this shirt and apparently he is all into Bigfoot hunting and that whole realm of the uh, you know cryptids that there's evidence of their existence but it's not yet been proven all of that he, he's very into it and he was going to have this altered to fit him because it was a two extra large and he wears a large but he's never seen anything like it he had to have it so we struck a deal for $45 and he was very happy so I just was like yeah there's Bigfoot right in front of me I have to buy this now <laughs> okay the next item is O'Neill Paps Blue Ribbon Board Shorts. I paid $5.30 for these, took an offer of $45, profit was $34.39. I have a little backstory on this, but I'm going to make a separate video about that. Okay, a handbag. Spartina 449 is the brand. I paid $5.65 for this, sold it for $50 on best offer, profit was $39. This is a Belk Brands men's 100% cashmere sweater. I paid $6.35, sold it for $52.97, profit was $40.92, and this went international. And this is another handbag, Vince Camuto pebbled leather tote. I paid $6.95 for this. It sold for $65. Profit was $49.76. This actually sold back in March for $50. It was returned because the buyer just didn't like it. And then it sold again in June for $65. And here's the buyer's feedback. The purse was awesome as described and the leather was nice classy purse so this person was completely happy with it teachable moment here is okay you get returns don't let that throw you off balance because you could sell it for more and the second or third or subsequent person who gets it could be completely thrilled with it so when something's returned because someone doesn't like it that's one person's opinion and somebody else might just love it so just keep going okay and the last item is a pair of aqua lung swim fins I got these free back in November so seven months ago and I had them priced at a hundred dollars the price tag on them was hundred and forty nine dollars so they were brand new Got an offer of 75, so close enough because they were free. Profit was $66.80, and these went to California. I'm in Atlanta, and the buyer was thrilled. Totally happy with them. Okay, returns. I had four returns. All but one were for the reason of doesn't fit, the one that the reason was doesn't match description or photos had some issues with the measurements saying the measurements were wrong 
I rarely have a return for that reason, so maybe I did make a mistake on the measurements. I wasn't going to argue about it. I just refunded the amount of $35.75. This was an international sale, so I really didn't want to go through the whole hassle of getting this item back since I think I only paid $3 for it. So I just chose to solve it that way. Now let's look at the numbers. Here is my June summary. I sold 113 items. Total profit with the returns factored in was $1,803.92. You can see that I'm up over $600 from the previous month and up over $200 than June of 2019. And the reason I'm looking back at June of last year is to do a comparison of the month of June, not just to the previous month this year, because we all know that COVID has caused many things to shift and change. And I do feel like some of my increased sales are due to more online shopping. But from a consistency standpoint, if I look at last year, I sold 97 items. Profit per item was $16.87 with a total profit of just over $1,500. And this year, my profit per item was $15.96. And I sold almost the same amount of items, a little bit more. So I don't feel like I'm looking at enough of the big picture. If I just look at the previous month, I want to look back to the previous year when there was no COVID factored in to see my progress with more of a turn and burn business model because I don't think my strategy of selling only higher profit items is going to work. and that's okay. I do experiments to find out this kind of information. So I really think having more lower dollar items in there mixed in with everything else gives you more momentum so that you can get to the profit per month that you are looking for. A little bit more on that in just a minute. Feedback, I had 113 sales, only 32 feedbacks, which is a 28% ratio. Um, not sure why that's so low, but um, nothing we can do there. Buyers leave feedback when they want to. Okay, number of items in my store has definitely increased. As of May 31st of this year, I had 366 items. As of June 30th, I had 477 items. More items in the store, more sales. Is there a correlation? I think so. Next, we have the average price of listed items. In May, the average price was $41.74. In June, the average price of listed items was $33.87. So that has decreased a little bit. Now I'm going to show you some interesting observations and let me show you how I'm getting this information because you might want to play around with this too. If you're an analytical person, you'll love this. If you're not an analytical person, you probably won't do it. <laughs> so. You can go to your manage paid and shipped orders view and choose whatever time frame you want and choose item title and put in keywords that will generate a report so you can look at what's selling based on keywords in the title, what type of item it is, brand name, color, size, whatever you want to study and look at. You may not have all of this information in your spreadsheet. So I'm all about analyzing the data to discover what you're doing right, what you can do better, and maybe what you shouldn't even do anymore. So 
you have to keep refining this business as you go along. I'm going into my 18th year of doing this and this is just something I enjoy doing is looking at the statistics, looking at the hard data rather than just saying, oh yeah, I think I sell a lot of XYZ brands, so I'll keep doing that. You can pull it up and look at it and see because this data does not lie. So what I did here was I pulled up a report for the keyword sweater in any item that was sold in June. And what I got was this list. It downloads to your computer and you can open it with whatever software you want to. I'm using Excel here. So there were 18 items for a total sale price of $439.88. I do not do free shipping so these are the straight sale prices. Shipping would be added on top of this. So let's look at some interesting information. I sold 18 sweaters for total sales of $440, I'm rounding up, profit of $317 in June. In a month where you think, oh, it's too hot, nobody's going to be buying sweaters. Well, I've said this all along, yes they are. <laughs> um, so this tells me, yeah, keep those sweaters listed. People are going to buy them in what some sellers would consider the off season. There really are no seasons with eBay. The next analysis was of a brand name, Chico's. I sold 21 Chico's items for total sales of $445, profit of $320. Now there's going to be some overlap with these categories because some of the Chico's items were sweaters and they may also be in the sweater calculation, but you can follow what I'm doing here as I'm looking at types of items, brand names, and other criteria to help me see what is generating the most sales or what isn't. Okay, I sold 11 items in the swimwear category, men's and women's, for total sales of $260 and profit of $187. What's interesting is I sold more sweaters than I did swimwear in June. That's the kind of interesting information I like to discover by analyzing stuff. Okay, 11 golfwear items for total sales of $205, profit of $148. And that is a category I am getting back into. They say we always return to our roots. Well, I started selling golfwear on eBay, hence the name of my store, Atlanta Golf Shop, back in 2003. So, time to revisit that. And another what would be considered off-season item jackets. I sold eight jackets for total sales of $186 profit of $134. So that's just an interesting way you can look at what's selling on your store, pull up those reports. If you're good in uh, Excel or whatever software you use, then you can manipulate the data and do some sorting and really take a good hard look at what your business is doing. While I did see a dramatic increase in my sales, that was not all 100% my doing. I know that sales have increased online due to COVID. There are many news articles from reputable sources reporting this. Forbes has this article titled Retailers Selling Non-Essentials See Double and Triple Digit Increases in Online Sales During COVID-19 Crisis. This was back in April. So we've got more people shopping online for those sellers that do have access to thrift stores. There's much more in them than normal. In fact, some of the thrift stores I've been to, the racks are so jammed you can hardly shop. And they're having special sales and more discounts to move some of this inventory through because they have so much. That is a very unusual situation. Also, 
on top of that my more aggressive selling strategy so I think it's just a cocktail of all of these things in addition I have found a source for inventory where I can buy the same quality and type of items that I've been buying for a dollar so we've got a lot of factors going on here but I strongly feel resellers are in the right place at the right time and now it's time to act and you will see results of that if you change some things and are a little bit more aggressive and take advantage of this situation. I'm also going to put a prediction out there that I think online shopping will increase and stay at these levels for a while because we've got more people on board with online shopping that didn't do it before. They were forced to do it if they wanted specific products because they couldn't go to the store and get them or Amazon was feeling the burden of orders they couldn't process and having these huge wait times, three and four weeks for items. Well, those frustrated shoppers came to eBay to find what they wanted and are dealing with individual sellers who can get those products out much faster than an Amazon warehouse could get them out. So. Again, we're in the right place at the right time, so it's time to act and see the fruits of that labor. Our stores are set up, we've got inventory to sell, so it's time to change some things and take advantage of that. I am making some changes in my business model, and it is because we are in the midst of chaos. And as an entrepreneur, I have always approached a chaotic situation as opportunity and I think smart entrepreneurs do this let's not look at everything that's going wrong let's look at what opportunities do we have and leverage that so one reason I'm making some changes is I am just feeling an intuitive push to compact my business from the standpoint of time, space, and overall efficiency. That's just something within me that I feel I need to do right now. So I tend to listen to that intuition and follow what it says. It usually turns out pretty well for me. Also, the effects of the pandemic have resulted in my own personal reflection on my entire life and everything I'm doing. I love this work and I have really missed it. I've missed being able to go to thrift stores whenever I want to. And I think once something is taken away from you, you realize how much you love it or don't care about it at all. And personally, the restaurant situation hasn't really affected me. But thrift stores being closed, that hit really hard. So I realized, you know, I really do enjoy that part of the business. I love it. And I want to do it more. So I am fine-tuning my eBay business so it's more fun than work. Removing the parts I don't like and still making it more profitable overall. On top of that, the death of a loved one has really made me take a good hard look at some things in my life and realize life is short. We don't know when our last day is going to be. And I need to build more fun and enjoyment and leisure and relaxation and adventure into my life. And that's what I'm going to do. Also, I am blessed with unlimited inventory options where I live. So there is no reason to hold on to inventory for a long period of time. I can get plenty of high quality profitable inventory anytime I want now that thrift stores are back open again. So I'm not talking about selling things for $10, but I don't feel the desire to hold on to things as long as I used to. You know, people need this stuff. That's why they're buying it. So maybe look at $20 profit per item as a reasonable benchmark and stick with that and just obviously I will have higher dollar items that I know I can get 75 to 100 dollars for and I'm not going to sell those for 20 dollars but holding on to something to get 40 or 50 
I may relax my standards more and I already have done that and it's working so I don't have an inventory shortage problem I can go get more anytime I want and I really do enjoy that part of the business the treasure hunt going and finding it so I'm gonna do that more now what I'm changing things I don't like <laughs> I'm getting out of the shoe business I just don't like it it doesn't appeal to me anymore and I don't want to do it anymore and so I don't have to so I'm clearancing out my shoes you're gonna see I don't have that many in my store anymore and I just don't want to do that niche anymore however if I'm walking through a Goodwill and I see a pair of brand new Birkenstocks with an $80 tag on them and they're three dollars I'm not gonna leave them there obviously if it shows up in front of my face there's some things I can't leave behind but I'm just not gonna spend any time in the shoe department because I just don't want to anymore I've I feel like that has run its course and I don't want to do that. The second thing is more aggressive pricing. Taking and sending lower offers for a faster turnover, eliminating brands and items that take longer to sell or that are no longer good sellers for me. I think you have to reevaluate your business at least once a year and say, you know what, this brand is just not working for me anymore, or this item isn't working for me anymore. It's oversaturated, or nobody wants it, or whatever the reason is. Again, I draw on my experience here. Things are constantly changing, and something that worked five years ago may not work now. So you, you really need to evaluate what's selling and do more of that and that's hard for some people because they're always looking for XYZ item because it's been working for them for five years but then it doesn't work anymore and it's hard for them to leave that behind but I feel like if you continually analyze your business and pay attention to what's working and just do more of that and stay on the cutting edge of what people want you're going to be more successful okay the third thing is I'm compacting my inventory meaning smaller items that take up less space are profitable and not breakable items including clothing accessories athletic wear men's swimwear and eyeglasses clothing is a huge category I know but things like big heavy coats and heavy jackets I am in a 1200 square foot apartment and I have to really be deliberate with what I bring in here and how I store it and you can store a lot more lightweight athletic wear eyeglasses belts suspenders hats in the same space that you can store big heavy jackets or shoes so that's a direction I'm going and that's what I'm going to share with you in future sales update videos are the types of smaller items that I'm going to be incorporating into my inventory and no breakables seriously none I don't like storing them or shipping them I don't like storing the packing materials you you have to have all the packing materials if you're going to do the breakables and in my world that just creates a lot of clutter so I'm minimizing the amount of packing materials I need on hand by looking at the type of inventory I'm selling and what packing materials it requires and again I want to stress this is your business you can do it however you want to after 17 years of doing this and my business evolving over all of that time this is where I am in my journey and you don't have to be in the same place you can do it however you want to there is no right or wrong way to do eBay it's all about what each unique seller wants to do and what works for their life and their family so goal versus actual my goal is now thirty five hundred dollars profit per month this month it was just over 1800 so I am on track and my goal is to reach that number by the end of 2020 I always give you an update on the premium library as of June 30th 2020 
There are 325 videos with 98 hours of education. You can check out the Premium Library. The link is below the video. Okay, that's it. As always, I love your comments. Thanks so much for watching and have a profitable and productive day on eBay. Bye.